Hey everyone, today I'm showing you guys a project that a buddy of mine Jason and I worked on with his hedge maple. Um, as you can tell here in the video that started, Jason's already cleaned the root ball and um, he's got some very gnarly uh, roots that are on there and so we thought, well, this would be a great opportunity to use what he has and um, create a root on rock appearance for this tree. Now this is a several year tree or several year plan uh, for development, but this gives you the initial look and styling and I'll give you guys kind of the um, abbreviated version of what you know what this project did um, So follow along and um, I'll let you guys see and uh, do a couple edits here, but um, Overall pretty cool process and we're pretty happy with how it turned out. Thanks. Those the two pieces that were crossing over on the inside. Yeah. And I think so. I may have to get this big one too. Your thoughts. This one that comes all the way down. I think that's one you probably want to leave at least initially to see if you can get in there for rocks. Yeah. And then if you have to, I don't I don't want to cut out too much because then you lose the effect of it, right? Because those three or four roots. You got three on the front and then one in the back. It kind of give you your palm look. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna get some fun in there. And that's the big thing I think that's right. Just pull everything back. You gotta spread it no out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot there too. Alright, I think I got a little Yeah, I think that looks pretty good actually. You got a lot of space to work in now where you can bring stuff up from the bottom. Alright, so now that the roots have been cleaned up and we have an idea of which ones we want to keep, at least initially, it's a matter of placing this lace rock that we selected under the main root, which you can see in my left hand facing the camera. Uh, we're trying to place the rock both through the roots but underneath the tree so that it looks somewhat natural and um, gets us a, a base or a, a flat line to start with and then we can start placing some smaller pieces of lace, lo lace rock around that and build up the structure that way. Now that the main rock has been placed, we're going to add some rocks that help support and fill in the gaps between some of the other portions of the roots. Uh, and you'll see that we select a few to make it into these small crevices and it works quite nicely.
so now that we have the rock somewhat placed um, with the root of the tree, um, now it's time to determine the planting angle. And so with some adjustments and some um, dirt in the bottom of the pot, determine which angle was best. Um, keep in mind that the top of the tree is going to be taken off at some point in time. So we wanted to place the, the roots at a good angle so you could see a good view of the whole, the whole layout. And now we uh, have got some dirt placed in the back. We determined we wanted the tree to lean a little bit further forward. So now we're placing um, the bonsai soil uh, mixture around it to somewhat secure it and, uh, and prepping it to be wired uh, into place at least initially. This will hold it in place and then we can go back through with our uh, chopsticks and secure it in a little bit better. And now that we know where we want the tree to sit in the pot and the angle of the tree with the roots, um, now we're just placing a few rocks around the outside to kind of help anchor it in, but then also when we go back to fill this in with dirt, it looks a bit more natural. Um, keep in mind, we do know we have a lot of gaps here that still need to be filled, and uh, we'll show you the second part of that once this has been uh, set in the pot, wired. We used a little bit of aquarium tubing to uh, protect the roots that the wire was coming in contact with so we didn't get any wire scarring um, there and then um, proceed to fill it with dirt and secure it by pushing the chopsticks into the voids that um, the dirt didn't directly fall into. Um, and then once it's securely set, you'll see the second phase of making this look a little bit more natural uh, coming shortly. So as I mentioned before, this is a hedge maple, and as you can tell, it looks pretty decent from this angle, um, but the hedge maples grow super fast, and one great thing about them is that, uh, you know, after a couple of years, this really taking hold of the rock and uh, filling in nicely, you can start to determine uh, which branches you want to keep and which ones you want to cut and start to develop branch structures in different places. And these back bud extremely well and so you could have a branch that pops up pretty much anywhere on this tree at any given time um, just because of the species. So that's why we chose to use this. It had great features to start with as far as in the bari goes and um, and as you can tell, there's you know there's some bare spots, but if you look closely, you can see many of the buds that are about ready to, to burst now. And um, we're gonna really promote this with fertilizing and uh, trying to get some branches to develop lower on the tree, and then maybe make this um, at some point in time down the road uh, a you know, formal upright or even potentially a, a semi-cascade if we can get the branch structures correct. Important parts because I don't know if we'll ever get a ton of growth enough to fill in this void. So you got it's here and all up in here. Yep. And then uh, come back and like down into here. Yep. And I'll fill in this as much as we can. I think that's okay to leave because mm -hmm. it's kind of a natural yep. look to, to some extent. Um, and you know, I'll try to get some of these little areas just to. So as Jason mentioned in the clip previous to this, there are some gaps under the tree that don't meet up with the rock and through no practical reason will this tree in any amount of time fill up those gaps perfectly. So what we've done is taken a concrete, a colored concrete epoxy mix and we're filling in those gaps underneath the tree and along the root line. Um, at this point the tree has been filled in and there's a lot of excess so we're working that in with the chopstick. Um, also underneath this concrete, just as a side note, is uh, is soil. So there's a gap or a barrier between the direct roots and uh, where the concrete will come into contact. Um, upon filling all those voids, we use a spatula. Or I use a spatula to clean up uh, the excess and start to work it in and make it look a bit more natural. 
Um, following this, you'll see uh, the use of the spatula and some other tools to clean up, make it look a little bit more natural and start to scrape away the excess uh, from the root. Um, after that, I determine, you know, where we need more or where we need less and, um, and then start to add texture with uh, some other tools, um, one of which is a, is a brush um, and then to add some color and a bit more natural appearance. We'll work in some uh, bonsai grit and um, maybe even additional coloring if needed. But um, for the most part, this came together quite well. It was just a matter of removing the excess concrete from the root itself and uh, making it look as natural as possible. So here's a couple close-up rotational views of the uh, of the top of the tree and then a few more of the side are coming but um, you can see the texture there and this keep in mind that this is wet still um, the texture goes quite well with the lace rock that it's sitting on and that was the whole idea was to try and make this look natural so that when it dries the tree is going to continue to grow and when it dries it will lighten up uh, match the lace rock quite nice nicely and then at some point down the road depending on the growth of the tree you can fill in some of the other voids that are there with pieces of moss or just change the potting angle it gives you a lot of flexibility for down the road to uh, change this into whatever style you like if you want to go with the cascade or semi cascade or um, formal upright um, there's lots of different options you're not limited so this will all attach at some point down the road and become more of a solid structure and you can move it but um, initially it turned out very very well I'd like to uh, say thank you to Jason uh, for bringing over his tree and trusting me to work on it and um, you know allowing me to videotape this it was fun and uh, you know several hours of work goes by so quickly in these videos but um, it was a great experience I'd also like to say thank you to the uh, Boise Bonsai Society um, we are all members of that club and so if there's anybody interested in this in the greater Boise or Idaho area I would definitely check uh, check into the club or look look us up and get you involved and engaged. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to um, Paul DeRose 
who uh, has helped a lot of us in the club and other members refine some techniques and is sharing his extensive bonsai wealth with us. And um, he's just a great teacher as along with uh, Susie and, and Barb from the Bonsai Society. So many thanks to lots of different people that keep, uh, keep us going and challenging us and sharing their, their wealth and knowledge. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. And to all you folks out there that subscribe, uh, thank you as well. Um, I like all the comments and feedback, and uh, I look forward to hearing from many of you. And, um, and yeah, keep keep it going and enjoy it. So thanks. Remember to, remember to subscribe. Have a good day.